everyone welcome back to my channel instant engineering so this is uh, ehp subject for btech finally a students triple e so this is the first unit that is basic concepts and analysis of hvdc converters so in this first chapter you will be learning uh, completely about hvdc converters what is hvdc and what are the different types of converters in hvdc all right so coming to the first topic so this is about you have to know what is meant by this hvdc system Okay, so basically, uh, all these HVDC systems uh, are, uh, you know, are divided based upon their pole and earth arrangements. Okay, we have pole and earth connections, right? Based on those connections, these HVDC systems are classified into different types. All right. So first is uh, first point. What you have to remember in these HVDC systems is HVDC means you have to blindly believe there are thyristors. Okay, so uh, I think you might have learnt about these thyristors and all, uh, you know, in your uh, electronic subjects, right? What is meant by thyristor? If if you have forgotten that, obviously you will be forgetting. I know, but I'll just try to uh, recall you. Okay, thyristor is nothing but it's a four-layered semiconductor device. Okay, uh, it will have p-type and n-type. Okay, uh, so basically it will have a uh, three electrodes. See, I'll just show you its uh, diagram. So, see, if I'm just drawing this roughly, okay? P, N, and this is P. You have here three parts mainly. That is, this will be the gate. Sorry. Okay. This is gate. And here the connection will be anode. Okay. This is for thyristor. All right. So, this will be N, P, N. Okay, N N will be connected like this, and uh, here you will be having the cathode. Okay, so you have to say if anyone will ask you what is meant by a thyristor, you have to say it's a four-layer device. Okay, semiconductor device. It consists of p-type and n-type as well. Okay, so here there are three electrodes in this. One is gate, anode, and cathode. Remember this diagram. And generally, whenever uh, you know the symbol of cathode. Uh, this thyristor will be see you will have like this okay anode cathode and a gate all right so this is how a thyristor this is a thyristor okay just remember for your uh, understanding i'm telling you generally in vivas and all they'll ask you what is the most frequently used thyristor is scr you remember this no scr silicon control rectifier so this is the uh, widely used thyristors okay just for your brief understanding just your recall i'm just telling this okay this is brief idea about thyristor now we will see so these kind of thyristors this symbols there right this we will be using in all this hvdc systems based on that these are divided into see almost five types all right so what are these First is monopolar HVDC transmission system. Monopolar, only one pole. We said it is between pole and earth, right? So this is one pole, bipolar. In depth about these all, we will see in the future uh, topics, okay? Further topics. So just briefly, I am just uh, showing you in this video, okay? So second one is bipolar HVDC transmission system. Next, back-to-back -back HVDC coupling systems. Two HVDC systems you can couple back-to-back, uh, -back, okay? So, that is also one type of uh, HVDC system. Another, homopolar HVDC transmission system. Next is, multi-terminal HVDC system. You have to remember this. See, one is mono, mono, one is bipolar, one is homopolar. Three you already remembered. Fourth one you remember as multi. Mono, bi, homo, multi. Next one is back to back. I am just telling you this how to remember. Okay, understood? B mono 1, bipolar 2, homo is self, multi means multi, back to back HVDC. Okay, this clear, right? So next one is uses of HVDC links. Why we use this HVDC is, so basically it is used to transmit very high power at different frequencies. 
See, in transmission lines and all, we'll be using, where we use this HVDC is mostly in transmission lines, okay? In transmission line, what happens when they generate the power? You need to transmit it, right? So, automatically, the generated power, they will, uh, it will be more. And it has to travel, I mean, it must be transmitted to longer distances, right? There, when there is high power, okay, and at different frequencies, we can't maintain the uh, same frequency throughout the transmission, right? So, there we will be using this HVDC links in order that uh, it can transfer the power, whatever the frequency is, it can transfer the power, okay? Transfer or transmit, anything. It is used to st uh, solve stability problems in AC grids. In grids and all, see, if there is stability, the power should be stably, you know, it should be there, right? If there are any uh, things like, if there is no stability in the powers and all, there also we'll be using this HVDC links where it will make the pow our power to be stable, stable connection, okay? It is used to transmit power over long distance. Like I said, in transmission, we should transfer the power to long distances right there uh, we will obviously for long distance of uh, power transmission we will be using this HVDC links all right next what are the important components of HVDC converter station so in a, now we are saying converter station right what are the main things that are there in HVDC this is very important all right so one is we are telling it is converting right obviously you need a converter unit next if there is a converter unit, obviously in transmission lines and all, we will be having a transformers, step up, step down transformers and all we have it. Similarly, we will be having here in HVDC converter transformer. And we have filters. Filters like uh, you have uh, read uh, earlier, I guess. So that would be AC, low pass filter, high pass filter and all right. Similarly, uh, you have read about all these things earlier. Tuned AC filter. High pass AC filter, DC filters. Okay, all right. Next, you need a smoothing reactor and reactive power source, the final power source. Okay. So these five things are there. Are the I mean uh, most important things which are they which must be there in a HVDC converter station, right? By the name itself, converter unit. From that we have a transformer, converter transformer. Next, filters tuned AC, high pass and DC filters and uh, after that, after the filters are filtered, you need a smoothing reactor, smoothener for that, right? Smoothing reactor and that power, that reactive power source, that's all, okay? I just told you how to remember also. Just go through this video, you will remember this image of what I have written here in your mind while writing your exam and I'm sure about it. If you concentratively, if you are listening to this video. Just remember this. This image will come into your mind. I bet you. Alright. Next topic is significance of HVDC trans transmission. So, like I said, where we use this and all now, what is its most important significance is, like I said, in transmission planning. See, whenever they are uh, planning to start any transmission uh, lines, they will use this HVDC transmission, okay? So, in transmission planning, when there is control of voltage, current or power, design, when they are designing these transmission lines and substations also, you know, this HVDC is considered. And project specification, when they are, uh, you know, telling them about the project, tendering, planning, execution, everything, they have to include this HVDC transmission, okay? And maintenance and operation. So, where we will be using this HVDC in activities such as when you are planning for transmission, control of voltage, current power, design of transmission lines, when you are designing all these substations and all, project specifications, tendering, when they, you know, they do this tendering and all, you know, for substations, power stations and all, then they have to use this HVDC transmission also. They have to tell they are using these links, HVDC links and all, okay? Planning, execution, maintenance and operation, all right? Next. Next we will see, all we have seen the, uh, the goodness of HVDC. Now there are some as well problems also in this one. What are those problems? So the problems are failure of that converter transformer. We said that there will be converter transformers, right? So there will be some, if there is any failure in converter transformers, 
flash over performance of HVDC converter station insulators caused due to rain, fog, snow, etc. and ground return problems. So if there is any snow, fog or anything because of that also HVD converter station, there might be some problems and ground problems also. Okay, these are uh, mainly problems which will occur in a HVDC system. I hope this is clear. We will be having some more topics coming up in the next videos. So if you like it, please uh, subscribe and uh, like it, write your comments and all. I hope this is useful for all the fine year students. Triple Thank you.